Bonjour et bienvenue au podcast Pere et Fils. Je suis Liam Edwards et je suis rejoint aujourd'hui par les très élégantes George Biedman et les streamers Matt Visual. <laughs> que sont les Pérez? Que Mat sont visual. les Fils? Je vous laisse une décider. Ah oh, oui, oui. Ça sonne un peu German at the end there, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for introducing us to the podcast, Kel. No, you decide what language that was. <laughs> La Liam. You decide, yeah, because no You're one's so gonna. <laughs> no French people are gonna gonna say that that was French. Well, well, As we'll we learned to, last week. We'll have to take a poll because it seems your German, George, although commended for trying, was a, uh, let's say, lackluster. To uh, be kind. All right. So next week is my week. Guess what? We we just we just gonna end this bit here, right? We just gonna end it here. <laughs> Please send in. I don't want to do Klingong. Please send in your, any either, of this other stuff. Please send in either but, your Vietnamese, your Chinese oh Mandarin, no, oh your no. uh, Afrikaans, or something. Please, someone, please, let's make Matt suffer <laughs> next week. <laughs> no, no. Send me like Spanish, you know, like Spanish. <laughs> Send us the vocal cord parasites. I'll still ruin that, but at least it'll be at least someone will be able my to favorite comment, My favorite comment last week said, quote, were you actually speaking German? Question <laughs> mark. Well, he was speaking garbage, but it tried to be German at times. <laughs> Didn't we get like didn't we get like five emails of people with comprehensive oh. essay breakdowns oh, of your pronunciations yes. in German? Yes. That was amazing. We, we we have enough learning material now to actually Please. learn German. <laughs> we got so many emails about your German. People have sent us entire textbooks in, in their emails over the past week. We got we got some good questions. We got a lot of suggestions for the trivia game. We got we got a lot of uh I can't tell if they're like amusingly angry or not. Yo, there is a guy who's doing a podcast for a German TV show called Good Game. It's like their version of um like what X-Play used to be, except it's actually still on the air. And it is regarded <laughs> as one of the better pieces of video game media out there in the world, and they freaking listened to our podcast. Hey, hey. And they said that they almost fell off their bike <laughs> during their like environmentally friendly sustainable german bicycle commute uh while while listening to me butcher their beautiful language <laughs> well now we're gonna get like the french equivalent like the greatest french media publication in france and they're gonna heavily criticize fires reported at ubisoft headquarters <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Cause um, the French Canadians too. They'll hear that, and over over in Montreal. Oh god, don't make it worse. Now I'm now I'm just like <laughs> wanting to take it all back. Yeah. Uh. I'm I'm loving it. Like 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 I said last week. You know, we're trying to make things a little more cultured here. A little a little educational. Uh, trying trying to teach the kids a bit about um, some some skills they can learn yeah. in lo in later in life. Yeah, yeah. O open open them to the world. Mm hmm. Uh, get them, get them ready for those those, uh, for those papers, please. That they gotta, yeah, they gotta yeah. give to the those ticket bills at the they airport. Get to <laughs> the real world. <laughs> we're, 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 that's it. That, this is our this is our plan. We just want to bring in the international patreons. Just seek them in with with microscopic <laughs> little bits of their community and their culture. Just just, so just, just in the case, only one, so they'll just, be just, the just butchering their culture and their languages. Just just bringing the international crowd in. Just, just in case uh, our, our fellow Americans uh, find themselves m moving, um, <laughs> perhaps after the next uh, four-year window, um, <laughs> we, uh, we'll, 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 we'll get them a little prepared for uh, the training. good destinations. <laughs> Ooh. Especially Ooh, if you're heading up to Canada, you know, gonna speak that French. Just, just repeat mm, yes, after me. Yes, you need to know. Just, just listen to the intro to this episode, and you'll be. Yeah, no one speaks English in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Not a soul. The super best friends. It's all. It's all French. It's all French. <laughs> so th this episode, uh, this episode, we had what was it? Papa and Shonen last week. So this this week oh, is. Oh no. Pere et fils. Pere et fils. Pere et fils. Pere et fils, maybe. I, I don't know. 
We'll find we'll find out next week. <laughs> next week's we, email. We Sist Mui Bon. The the person who gave us this French, but it was very kind enough to put the very elegant George Reedman and the illustrious Matt Visual, supposedly, according to Google Sensei, but I, I just hope that there's no like you know, code words in there. Like, like he didn't send you a, a spot of French that said like the th- the South will rise again. Or yeah, <laughs> well, like like sixty nine eleven was called? an inside like, job. Like sixty sleeper agents were just like awoken. <laughs> <laughs> now there's like a, a French uprising in some well, part like of the I world. Well, like I said, fires reported at Ubisoft. <laughs> <laughs> this was the plan all along. Oh. oh, this is this is how we bring down AAA gaming. We uh, make fun of of the languages of the country. <laughs> We're terrible people now. We're officially terrible people. But We're people are in people are, trouble. people are bullying us into doing this. We had like people wanting Portuguese, people wanting Chinese. Oh no! Oh, that'll be fun. Chinese is gonna be a. Woo. That's gonna be Matt oh. next week. No! No! no. <laughs> Don't put. Don't put that in their minds. <laughs> God damn it. So, apart from studying German, did we actually do anything this week? How about you? Dude. How about you, George? Dude, I I did a home improvement project. I had a weekend Ooh. carpentry adventure. Were you building something uh, VR related? Uh, tangen t- tangentially. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Where's Matt, the German textbook? My... Let me erase <laughs> something off the dock real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you've been to my living room, right? Yeah, n- no, yes, of course. <laughs> you know what it looks like dungeon. underneath my TV, right? Yes, it looks like how hell. How would you describe... Oh, hell, okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a bunch of wires everywhere um yes yes and i'll be uh getting some pictures that i can share with liam while i explain but but for you our humble listener Mm. our um beautiful beautiful uh, compatriots and fans imagine if you will spaghetti wires everywhere the dystopia from the matrix you you (laughs) see the little squiddies like flying around the giant wrecked um um remains of what used to be planet earth that has been taken over by by a, 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 almost a growth of, of plastic and wires and trash. That's basically what's underneath my TV. The previous lady who lived in my apartment built a giant <laughs> particle board box where the TV goes because she did not want to see any wires coming out, which means I gotta suffer. The, that giant box has a little uh, hole at the bottom that is about three feet high. It, um gives me room to put consoles that go on the floor that have wires going up into the TV through a tiny hole in the box. Uh, if, if I ever want to plug anything into the TV, I have to like roll my sleeves up and jam my arm up into this weird installation. Mm. It looks like and a fireplace was meant to be there. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like, except the material, like, there's no way. It's, it's not bricks. She just, it's like she just like gave highly up flammable through. plywood and particle board. Um, for what it is, it's, like, constructed okay. It's just for, like, an old grandma who did not want to see any wires coming from her one cable box into her one TV. And, uh, she she tucked her cable box behind the walls, more or less, of the apartment. Because the carpenters, like, installed a new little, like, wall extension for this stuff to go into. But I can't put my consoles there because you got to, like, take a disc in and out of the console. You got to, like, have a line of sight with uh, the sensors for the wireless controllers. You got to you gotta take them in and out as, as time goes on and, and consoles get changed out as technology gets better. It's not good for, for a young, hip, uh, handsome, active, uh, uh, tech-savvy... Uh, but also thrifty spenders such as myself. So over the weekend, I went to Home Depot. I got a piece of particle board <clears throat> that fits about halfway through the little uh, alcove that that gives me another extra bit of shelf space. I, I sanded the thing. I painted the thing. I drilled supports into the wall. And I only screwed up one thing, and and that is that that the 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 shelf supports are not exactly um symmetrical and even but you will you, you don't notice when the shelf is up when the shelf is up everything looks fine 
Apart yeah. from and VR lot. headsets are just sure. sliding, sliding off slowly. <laughs> I'll I'll give you a picture of what it looks like afterwards because it only looks maybe like I don't know maybe you guys can give me some words of encouragement but I M O this shelf that I built makes it God damn it come on Skype participate with me there we go I M O this shelf made it look like uh, maybe forty percent better in my head I was picturing a beautifully clean like oh. uh, tightly woven yeah, together cables that well it's not but I, your shelf does look it, crooked. Looks like it's bending a bit, George. It does look like it's bending in the middle. Yeah, it looks like it's it's gonna Why? fall. Yeah, <laughs> he went to go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do this? <laughs> it's weird because the two heavy items, like the PS4 and the PS3, are on the ends to like counterweight. Counterbalance. Oh yeah, it they're, out. they're they're closer to the support. The and lighter then, stuff is in the middle. And then the Wii U that is dead weight is literally bending mm. it in the middle. God, you know the saddest part of this whole process was when I was taking <laughs> everything out of that little alcove. I spread it across the floor, and the <laughs> the dust underneath where the Wii U used to be was. It was the most dust of them all. <laughs> like, I swear, I, I, I like picked that thing up and a little cloud flew into the air. <laughs> oh, poor Wii U. Uh, did you guys read the news? Uh, according to um, uh, uh, a, a very reputable news website, the Wii U is getting an extra layer of dust added this, um, this fall. <laughs> They're e they're bothering to send dust updates. That's the, even it's, even for um, Wii U. That's a bit too much. Really gonna revitalize the what's the, the update? The nothing. I missed this. Um, a, an extra layer of dust is going to be uh, rolled out to all Wii U platform owners. Um, and... <laughs> wait. The, the <laughs> official My... Nintendo executives have reported that um this dust will will enable legacy Wii U owners who who Nintendo very much still wants to cater to to uh enjoy some new thing on their Wii U's uh because as as we know we have uh, been been yearning for 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 something to at least just play on it if 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 not anything you know electronic or or software based or uh or 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 interactive or challenging at all then then at least a new cosmetic item to uh put on top of of your Wii U hardware itself Okay, I'm still I'm still lost here. There was an update. What? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, new new dust, new dust. Everyone's Wii U is getting some new dust soon. Thank thank you, the hardtimes.net for that joke. <laughs> new layer of dust coming. The to best me. thing, the best thing is, I just heard Matt typing in the background. I was like, Yeah, I was looking for real. <laughs> is he, <laughs> look is he typing this? We okay. dust a an extra yeah, layer yeah, of yeah, dust yeah. to see if it was a game. <laughs> like, <laughs> for for viewers who want to participate, Google this. There's a fun a fun little fake news onion story. Quote, we know that the little black box next to your PS4 on the TV stand hasn't had a new game since Breath of the Wild. Quote, said Nintendo president Tatsumi Kimishima. Quote, but after positive response to the label, we thought a new layer of dust would be a good addition to the Wii U experience. While an initial release date hasn't been set, the legendary Japanese publisher has confirmed a price tag of 49.99, which is the current, and considered to be pretty generous, according to most experts, resale value of a complete Wii U console at second-hand retailers. I also want to throw in that that's about the uh, same value of my entire collection of games, too, which uh, you can see about half of in the, in the left-hand side of the photos I've, I've shared with you, my private co-hosts. Um, Do you now, know what annoys what, me what, a little what, bit? After all this VR <laughs> chat, after all this VR chat, we've had weeks and weeks, like the, the fucking VR bonanza we've had. What, I'm wait, just looking at George's one lip. week. What's... What? Shut up. Get out of here. It's been like an eternity. Um, but looking at George's living room, it's like, yeah, you, you know, you need space. You need to move your couch around. George's living oh, room is like... that's right. George's living room is like four times bigger than my apartment. I I I sent you the picture. What? I sent you a picture in which I had moved my couch out of the way for VR. 
Yeah, everything I, for VR, man. I was not lying in the video when I said I had to move my freaking couch. But you guys you guys can see that I'm not full of shit. In this picture I just sent you, you can see that I rotated my couch 90 degrees counterclockwise so that it's running parallel to the PlayStation's camera's eyesight, uh, so to speak. So that I can have like at least three more feet of, of walking space. You, you can't have company when I'm jerked over. Into the They'll fun just be zone. facing the wall. Basically, oh, though, no, I, I had company. They, they, like, they, they were able to Looking at this photo, like, obviously this is an audio <laughs> experience, but looking at this photo of George's, for anyone who's watched the PlayStation VR review that George did, like, last week, which was a really good video and definitely almost sold me on VR, a lot better mm. than Papa and Shannon has done. Mm. But the space between, like, Matt, the you're space. looking at the picture as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know where the TV is, and then it's just like a big white space, and where from the back of the sofa to where obviously the wall, the wall, the exposed wall is to the next room is like the yeah. the big. That's like the size of my apartment. <laughs> oh my god, oh. that's ridiculous. Where's your, your bed? Where, where, it's like where, bed like there. imagine where George's TV is like. Like, imagine that is like a big cupboard area, and then on top of it is a bed. Because my cupboard is underneath my bed. See, this is what you do. You get your <laughs> VR sensors, and you use your bed, okay? Use your bed as the floor mm -hmm. for the VR. Hey, There's some good hey, VR videos for that. You can't sell me on this. I saw George fucking combat rolling around his room in that PlayStation VR video. I, was I like, actually have done action rolls in Super Hot, and it works. I was like, watching that video, I was like, those motherfuckers, there is no way I can do <laughs> this in my room. <laughs> and to add insult to injury, you guys were like, hey, we're totally gonna stream together, and we're gonna play VR games, and it's gonna be freaking amazing. <laughs> Wait, wait, aren't the walls very thin in Japan? Like, if you were to hit the wall, would you, like, poke a hole to the next <laughs> Pretty much, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be, like, waving at my neighbor. Konbawa, senpai. <laughs> oh, I'm so... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Gome, go, was it Gomenesai? <laughs> Sumimasen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sumimasen. PlayStation VR or Suru do Gomen. Oh gosh, that that's good. That's good. But uh there's so many more cables in my life than there used to be. Charging cables for every little piece of wireless VR thing that they want you running around with. <gasps> Anyways, uh that's that's pretty much my my home improvement project this weekend. I, I built a new shelf to store some game stuff on. It was hilarious taking my living room apart and putting it back together again. I now have my PlayStation 4 going through the world's stupidest daisy chain. Uh, the HDMI cable coming out of my PlayStation 4 goes into an HDCP stripper so I can record videos on YouTube with uh, VR and stuff like I did in this week's video because it was important. And I have money to spend on that stuff now. And an HDMI splitter, which all my other consoles are going to now as well which apparently needs to be turned on before it can split things. And then there's a new capture card, which is exclusively powered via a USB cable that you plug into something else. Usually the console itself. However, because of PlayStation VR, there's no more USB holes left on my PlayStation. So I have it, like, <laughs> plugged into a little wall cell phone USB charger outlet. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to be buying a USB hub so that I can rope a uh, USB extension cable for my desktop PC in my bedroom over to the living room so I can stream console games and VR games because I tried to do it on my laptop out there and my laptop is too crappy to. It uh, made some very, very ugly footage when I tested it out. And I like that you did it in the dark. You just... I did... <laughs> I loved it. I didn't do all of this in the dark. It was just like this... No, not the building. I like that you did your VR video in the dark. It was just like... Oh. Just George dancing around in the dark mm. with this blue thing on yeah. his face. I had I had so much fun putting that together, like getting the lights all perfect. Was I too sweaty in that video? <laughs> was I a little... Uh, you looked like you were... Was I a little slimy looking? You, you, you didn't look slimy looking. You did look comfortable, though. Those pajamas. Mm. 
Nice. Yeah, Very yes. comfortable. Because uh, there, there were a lot of takes during the like darkened living room, George is talking to the camera segments, where I was just like sweltering. Meanwhile, it's like, what, f- five days later, and it's cold! What is this, Matt? What, what's I happening? I hate Atlanta with this. Like, can you just get warm and stay warm, please? I know, right? Jesus. Anyways. Dudes, don't go that because enough, it's like... about the weather. This is, like, this week and last week have been the week where Japan changed from very, very cold to now it's borderline going to just mm. be like an egg. oven. Yeah. Outside. So this is yeah. like the week where I'm safe where I cannot sweat or not freeze to death. And then within and the next two weeks, morning train rides. I'm going to uh, probably die. I hate Japanese summers. So, <laughs> uh, the first they time suck. I went was in uh, in August, I believe, in the Tokyo. Worst. It was way worse than anyone had warned me. <clears throat> and it's even worse down in West Japan. It's so humid. It's like ninety percent. Oh it's yeah, like that's Florida like Florida down here. Right? It's horrible, horrible. George, wow. the more I look at this shelf, the more I want you to fix it. <laughs> I, I don't even see. That's okay, better fine. Wood, you know what? I'm gonna say just like I don't wait, see you know you where your like about. subwoofer is on the on the bottom. Yeah, Can you just put like a brick between the two so it straightens it out. I don't, I don't, I, I choose not to see what you guys are talking about. I'm going to put, like, an envelope up to my screen, see if the, the line you is straight. You can clearly see the bend. I hate you guys so much, it's not straight. It, it, God damn it! It's not, ah! it's not straight in the middle, I don't know how you've made it bend. It's, it's buckling under the weight of the Wii U, I guess. You need to, you need to the, get some, some pine, you need to get some pine wood. Well, well, it's particle board. I don't, I don't know if I want to put um, like hard, maybe some cherry, like thick, some like, some like of that cher- red Oh yeah, cherry oak. would be real heavy, and some I don't know if I want to put like a heavy material on those little uh, supports that you can you can kind of see on the left and right side underneath the shelf. It's some of that red oak, that red oak, man. Yeah, it, it would be. Just classy, carve yourself a tree. Some of that plywood. It could also come tumbling down. Plywood is not classy. Plywood. No one has ever said the word plywood with like this, the Matt Visual <laughs> sex voice. Get some of that plywood. Oh, plywood is, plywood. is wood shavings glued together and shaped into a, a a morbid facsimile of wood. Plywood is the Frankenstein zombie of the construction world. You only use plywood for like trash and skateboard ramps. <laughs> You but I bet plywood for putting together other projects. But I bet the plywood is at least straight. Oh my god! <laughs> I ain't get no love. I just can't win. <laughs> I, wanna, I can't believe. I want an update for next week. I want to see if the shelf is straight. <laughs> okay, at this you point, it don't matter if the shelf is straight. That's its own choice. That's its own to life to support. live. I'm I'm keeping it the way it is because I'm afraid of touching that thing. <laughs> it's gonna happen when I come over. <laughs> it's gonna it is, isn't it? Especially when the Xbox broke and you put bayonet in it. Just carry on just my break. work, please. Carry on my work, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna come in and just gonna break before I even take off my shoes. It's happened, <laughs> Matt. Remember when I tried to show you bayonetta and my yes. Xbox red ringed in front of your face? <laughs> And then I threw it in the trash because I bought a Wii U. <laughs> oh, let's play this game. This game is awesome. Oh, this is great. You haven't played being there yet? Oh, no. <laughs> it did the thing that Xbox 360s do. George, can I, can I, uh, George, I have a unique question about your living room. Okay. What's the trophy for? Uh, 1985 Michigan cover model of the year. No, 1987. I stand corrected. I found it two apartments ago, <laughs> and I've just been carrying it around ever since as a conversation piece. But since then, um, my our, our good friend Kyle Javelli has constructed me like a little uh, sunlight medallion that I'm going to put on there. I also got a little uh, smash medallion that I put on there. So now it's a smash trophy. Nice. It's a, it's a, a, a fine-ass looking trophy. Thanks, thanks. I glued a little smash medallion on it myself. Nice. You must thanks, have been one thanks, hell of a I, cover star found it in the closet of a previous apartment myself <laughs> speaking of kyle Javelli, mm-hmm. speaking of kyle 
mm-hmm. wonderful Good friend of the show. Good old Monster Props. Q Monster Props, Mr. College Valley. He hit me up on Twitter and he was like, Liam, Liam, <laughs> I know I know all you guys on Papa and Sean or whatever the French translation is. You love anime because we all love anime yes. on the show, don't we, George? Especially me. Yeah. Well, he recommended to me an anime that a couple of friends had also recommended to me. Uh, that I had planned on watching, and uh, Kyle's uh, seal of recommendation did it for me, so I, I took the hit and I watched the first episode of two new animes, uh, well, kind of new, but one called Megalobox. 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 Bobby, you want to go down to the Megalobox and get a Megalo bundle? And this, this shit, this shit is good. You remember how you liked Redline, George? It's good shit, Bobby. Yeah. You should watch Megalobox. <laughs> oh, oh, it's like Redline? It's like the animation is is watered down anime episode. Like, it doesn't have that film budget. But the style. The style is almost there. It's like Cowboy Bebop crossed with a bit of, like, Ooh. Hajime no Ippo with a bit of Redline thrown in there. So, the premise is, like, there's this guy... I forget what his name is, but he goes by Junk Dog or something like that. Like he has like a fighting name, right? And he competes mm-hmm. in this underground sport called Megalo Boxing, where people wear like exoskeleton gears on their arms Ooh. to like power up. So their it's punches. arms. It's basically arms, but they don't extend. They just have <laughs> they just have these he looks cool like spike. Ass- he does look like Spike. He does look like Spike, and he's got kind of Spike's attitude a little bit. He's maybe not as charming as Spike. He's a bit of a punk compared to Spike. But he does look like Spike. But they fight... Well, he he basically is like... So I imagine he's going to be like this fucking amazing boxer, but actually he's like throwing fights to win money at the moment, and then he like challenges the champion at the end of the episode. Nothing really major happens in the first episode. Only episode one is out. But man, it oozes style. It's really cool. And I know you liked Redline, George. So you should Redline check it out. Was, was was a good boy. Maybe maybe it when was, all the episodes for Megalobox come out, you should check it out. Did a good but job. yeah, I agree with Kyle. This is a damn, damn good first episode of this season. So you should check it out. Matt, you should definitely check it out as well. Yeah, I, I, I just rather binge it. When it's done, I, yeah, I, need to catch I know up that on feeling because, because like today I was like, oh, maybe the new episode's out, and I looked and I was disappointed because it wasn't. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm like in that, Atlanta I'm in that void now. Like, like, like Atlanta um, is coming out now, and it's just like this is a show like I absolutely have to watch. It's like no, I'm, I'm gonna binge it. I'm I have to wait. Like, it. I gotta binge it. The Walking Dead, binge it. Gotta gotta wait till it's yeah. all done. Binge it. Well, there, Mr. Robot, binge it. Well, on top of Megalobox, there is a show I could binge, and I've wanted to binge it forever because I've watched the first couple of episodes and I loved it, and friends tell me it's amazing. And that is, like, one of anime's most talked-about legendary shows, which is a series called Legend of the Galactic Heroes, which is, like, this space opera epic from, like, I think the 80s. It was like one of like anime's defining moments as a oh that's where that artful. guy's from yeah so I've always I've wanted seen to that guy it's super popular and it's been around for ages but it's super long and I've never got a chance to watch all of it but this new season of anime alongside Megalobox and uh, the new season of My Hero Academia which is also pretty good yeah uh, they are doing a awesome like a bridged version. Of the Legend of the Galactic Heroes, like a retelling, following like the novel and the original anime series, but they're doing it in twelve episodes and then like four movies split into four episodes or some shit. I don't know, but I watched the first episode of this because I've always wanted to watch Legend of the Galactic Heroes. But I watched it. I was like, I'm gonna pussy out. I'm not gonna watch all 120 odd episodes. I'm just gonna like watch the abridged and see how it is. So it was the first episode of this, and it was awesome as well. It was so cool. Like, the art was amazing. Everyone's, like, all swanky, wearing, like, military uniforms and all super kakui, like, cool-looking dudes and stuff like that. And there's, like, 
the CGI is actually pretty good. Like it had like a million oh, spaceships CGI all fighting. CGI good in anime. I know, I but it looks pretty good. Like it actually looked pretty good. It didn't look cheap at all. It, it looks good. I was I was highly impressed with the with the episode. And although it didn't show like one of the major characters, like in the first episode of the old series, it shows it from his point of view. Um, they didn't, and they revealed him at the end, and it was kind of a cool reveal. But it was good. So like, there you go. Two animes you should check out: Megalo Box and uh, the new season of, uh, well, the, I say the new retelling of Legend of the Galactic Heroes. So, George, come on, come yeah. on. Uh, George tapped out. He's gone. He's fixing you know, his uh, shell. I spent a lot of energy. Like, also, also, I, I just want to say that I'm like extremely stressed out now. I'm very worried. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a mental wreck now because of uh, my shelf having an ever so slight dip. See, he, see, am, he tapped out. He, I am. He didn't I, am I am. I am. I am wondering how many times he's like peeked at his shelf, like had a little look. Like, is it? Is it straight? Is it not? Like, I can imagine him just how ever as many as you you like. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot. Well, I, I, mm -hmm. I've, I, oh, Netflix and old chill. I did, if you want some Saturday morning cartoons, uh, Voltron will get you going. Vol Voltron is, is, is cool. It's cool. It's Wait. cool. It's not, it's not smart all the time, but it is, um, it, that's why it's a Saturday morning cartoon. Quality. Wait, you've been, you've been watching Voltron? Voltron. Yeah. Is this like the, the second original series? Voltron? No, 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 no. This is like the animated new series. Um, oh, there was one from 2016. Yeah, it it, it looks the action and everything. It, it I think it might be the same people who did uh, Korra, because they the animation studio that did Korra. Let me see, Legend of Korra, because was, it looks exactly the same. Because I I remember Voltron from when I was a kid, and I thought it was the coolest stuff ever. And then Toonami started running Gundam, and I was like, oh. oh this and I is... have not thought about Voltron since. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is this is different. Wait, um, oh my god. Yeah. George just praised an anime. Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, Ooh. I, Ooh. Matt, huh? I mean. George just okay, praised what? an anime. Whatever series of Gundam it was that Toonami was running in Gundam like Wing two thousand, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that that really got me going as a kid. It was actually the first mango I bought. I uh, ordered it from the internet and read through it with my mom. It was really adorable. Holy shit! We were so growing. Voltron is like a real. <laughs> Voltron actually was like a big thing in my life for like six months when I was a nine-year-old child. We have wow. some growth. I'm quite impressed. Yeah. So that's 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 my uh, my my praise or whatever it was you considered it. <laughs> Matt, did you watch um, Annihilation? Yes, I did. I Ooh. absolutely did. Okay, I watched it as soon as I got as soon as I got off from the podcast. Um. Yeah, I I. It's not it's not Ex Machina. Ex no. Machina was just. Exactly. Really good. Um, Annihilation. I, I still enjoyed it. It was weird. Yeah, I have to agree with you. It, it, it was a little, a little boring. A li n n I, I don't think it was. I didn't get bored from it. I, I guess I like boring stuff. Um, like mm. for instance, I, I think like um, Breaking Bad. That, that's like a boring show. That's wow, true. Okay. Like oh, no. show. wow, okay. People well, are going to get mad, even though I actually No, no, it. I like it. I really like it, but I like boring. But I know what boring oh. is. Like, some, like, people I know that just, they kind okay. of want to be stimulated all the time. Yeah. That's a boring show for them. So, but, like, what as I was saying last week, like, you already kind of know what's happening, whereas in Ex Machina, it's always like you're building up to, like, what's going to happen. Whereas in Annihilation, you kind of, like, kind of already know what's happens. So, but, you know, the ending's like, oh, yeah. You kind of like I kind of kind of could have guessed this quite early on because they 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 show their cards too early, right? Did you did you did you feel no, that? I didn't I I didn't feel that too much because I feel like it you kind of they you kind of needed to with a with a with a movie like this because if they didn't a lot of the audience probably wouldn't understand the ending of it very much. It'll be too much information to 
you know, they'll they'll be looking online like explain this because they they wouldn't know what. <laughs> Ending it overnight. At the end. They're probably still there's probably still people asking. Yeah, there's probably still people, I, I, and you know, there's a, there's a theme. This this is like a movie where there's a theme and there's a point that he's trying to get across, and you have to kind of like get that point. Um, it, it's not for everyone. <laughs> like I can I can say, oh, watch Ex Machina if you like sci-fi, you're gonna find some enjoyment from it. I feel like Annihilation yeah. is not that. It's not that. It, it's it's one of those movies. Is one of those movies where you you have to sit down and have to digest what they're saying. Um, and I I don't think it's bad because of it, but I I don't know. I I don't know how to feel about it because I I I I, I feel like the the way they explain the characters, what they did pop too early was like the characters. Like yeah. you, they kind of like laid it out, like, oh, this character is is here because of this. This character is here because of this. They want to do this because of this, and it's just like, it just kind of felt felt flat for me for the other characters. So you didn't really care about the other characters that were going on, and um, and I know what you're talking about now, um, where you said like the ending felt kind of sour because you already knew that what what like the not not the ending where um the conclusion of what what's inside that little bubble thing but like after that part i know that's if that's what you're implying yeah yeah the, the, yes, the that, eyes that i would have to agree it kind of felt flat and i feel i feel like a lot of things fell flat in the movie yeah um because i i think it's a, a an editing pacing issue that they did there if but I, I guess they wanted to make it more accessible because that, that's what it seemed like. Like, so people can understand, but maybe they, he should have just made the movie he wanted. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what was going on in I these directors' like, heads, I, in the editors' did, heads. Yeah, but I did I hear feel some like stuff. It could have been a studio, better movie. Yeah, the huh? studio, whoever was in charge of the budget, they stepped in a little bit because it wasn't some. I think Alex, whatever his name is, he wanted to... Uh, do something different with it like there was plans for it to be not the way it turned out and mm. then some some studio people stepped in and was like hey no this doesn't make any sense i don't like this so it was changed a little bit um, yeah i, I mean it, you gotta he, he he likes to do the deep stuff and i like i like i like the deep stuff I like the deep stuff this it's one by <laughs> no means a bad movie like people should no. watch it it's a good it's a good movie it's just not ex machina I would, good. Yeah, which... I, I would say if if you guys, if the people here listening to us go watch the movie, there's a chance that you might not like it. <laughs> there's a chance. <laughs> there's a chance that you may not like it because it's one of those things where it, it there there is some issues, and it depends on how. Um, I'm I'm a little biased because I like his movies. So I would I'm willing to go through the hell even though it may not be kind of the perfect vision because it ex machina I feel like it was executed properly and it was a smaller movie and I, I felt like he did better with that just three characters. He did so much well, a little about four, but but three main characters and I felt like he did better with that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what happened in development of, you know, post production or whatever. But yeah. I, I would say yeah. There you go. There you go. Now nice. Nice. You can watch it on, on Japan Netflix. <laughs> you can. You can. You can. And probably other Netflix around the world as well, just not America's for some not reason. America's. For some reason. George, guess what? What? I played a video game. What's a video game? Is it like a carpentry project, but fake? Um, no, because in video games, you build straight shelves. Is it oh. VR? No. Or is it RR? RR? What's RR? Re reality, reality. <laughs> ah. Where shelves are not straight. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. I it's be not that bad, guys. We have to take a Twitter poll. George, you need to post that photo and you need to ask is it straight it, or is it. it it's like it's will like the be dress in the description for 2018. Of this podcast. It's like the dress for 2018. Is it or isn't it? It's it might straight. just be the angle of the camera. No, because hang on, I'm gonna look. open up Photoshop and like draw a line. No, <laughs> between no. the left and right sides of the shelf. And no, see, because see like your PS4 happens. cases all look straight, and the floor looks straight, and your TV looks straight. 
dude, what is this game? What what is this? Oh How yeah, is this like a good game? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, we this is we like the perfect know. like this is we, this is the type of game where you're gonna tell me like the gameplay is amazing. It doesn't matter about the graphics. Gameplay is amazing. We we tell all know about R and R isn't a good game, but a game I did play was a game called Minute, mm-hmm. Minute. made by minute one half of the Vlambe Studio, uh, like. Uh, Rami Ismail's partner. I think his name. He goes by JP. JP. J. No, not JP. JW. I think his name's like Jan something 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 something. I'm googling right now. Uh, his name is Jan Wilhelm Nijman. Some more butchering of languages there. Um, but it's a game completely in black and white. It's only. It's pretty cheap. Uh, on PlayStation and Steam, I think it's like ten dollars in America. Um, and the the gimmick, I, because it definitely is a gimmick, is that you have sixty seconds from your start point to then go out of your like wherever you are, your house or your base at the time, and then explore as much of the world or gain or do as much as you can in sixty seconds, and then you die. <laughs> That's cute. I, and then you have I, I to like start them. again. Now you have to start again. But your progress is carried over. So if you open a gate with a key, that gate will then be open. But you have to travel all the it's, way to the gate. Now it's like a roguelike but fast paced. I no I no it's already slow. digging this idea. No, it's oh. slow. And this is the thing. The idea I think is cool. But it's a gimmick. And the like the more you play the more I felt frustrating, frustrated, le- just tired. Like it's a cool little tiny world where it's it's so it, you can feel like the Zelda inspiration all over it. It's like a mix between the original Zelda where you move between the different screens, uh, like uh, the Game Boy Link's Awakening. Like it is like got stuff like that all over it's like you find a key you open a gate you find a uh a sword you like can chop down some grass uh you can have some fire and then you can burn some stuff like it's it's like super simple uh one plus one equals two like gameplay like nothing complicated but the idea is that in the 60 seconds you have to get the item and then finish the task before you die or you have to explore a place die and then remember what you saw and then like sort of figure it out yourself which in it in its sense is cool now but the problem is the more you play (laughs) the more time you just spend backtracking or getting to the place where you just died to have that bite-sized little satisfaction of like opening a gate or something i'm now watching it and i don't know what i was expecting but having to so like Start every so for new example over from the same spot looks repetitive. Yeah, so for example, like it is cute and I like the idea. I'm not sh- like it's got really good reviews. Like uh, it's got like from sort of maybe 7 to like 10 out of 10s I think from some outlets. I think Eurogamer gave it like a recommended. And the I don't know whether it does, like, I think the idea is to put pressure on you to do stuff and remember stuff, but it doesn't pull it off very well, because it's, you said you, it sounded like a fast-paced roguelike, it really isn't Mm -hmm. fast, like, your character doesn't feel fast, and everyone's text is really slow, on purpose, to make you waste time, that's what I was picturing, something that, like, looks more like Gungeon, or, yeah, like, like, if you had the speed, and you felt like you were moving at a good momentum, I feel like it would be better. But the idea is, like, you would, like, go up from the house and you go to the next screen and you would see, like, a, like, a, like, a, maybe, like, a dungeon and you go into the dungeon and then the dungeon would be, like, a Pokemon dungeon, maybe, like, uh, you know, the caves in Pokemon where you can only see what's in front of you with the light and then the more you progress, the more you can see. So the idea is that in the 60 seconds you would, like, run as much as you can and try and figure out the pathway through the dungeon and then you die, and you try it again, you'd, you'd get a little bit further, you die, you try a little again, and then you make it out. And then you die. So then you know the and path, then... and you have like that one or two second bit of satisfaction where you've completed that little bit. You're like, I've done it. 
but compared to all of the just like backtracking or like running to the spot where you died the like one or two second bit of satisfaction that minute gives you is just not enough to get over just like the tedium of that running to where you swing. are that sword swing is a slow, heavy swing. It's obviously on and, purpose. And for like, a game where you only is, have a minute. But it's on I, purpose, isn't it? Everything is meant to be, mm -hmm. like, I guess, precise? Not precise, uh, but and, there's they, definitely going to be people... They keep the tension high, I guess. I, yeah. I, guess, I, I can just imagine killing, like, almost killing a boss and then dying in the middle of the fight. Yeah, so like, there are, like... I, I can imagine the frustration of that. And I just like no. Nah, like I haven't got to anything that's like a boss, but there have been stuff where you know you've like something has clicked in your head and you try and do it, but then you die and you're like you have to run all the way back. And I've played it maybe for about two hours or so. So if you think in two hours, that's you at least 120 times. That's at least 120 deaths, and that's if you don't die Ooh. to enemies or you can restart yourself. You can restart yourself, like you can automatically die at any point. So if you like figure something There's out kill yourself and you want some more time, <laughs> but that still doesn't stop you from having to go back. Now, you do make you do like find new things. So you start off in your house and then you move to like a caravan, like a motorhome kind of thing, and then you start from there. But everything is still like two or three screens. If you think of it in like the original Legend of Zelda, like everything is two or three screens away from you, like the 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 next bit of progress. So you then you have to like explore and explore, and it's all dark, and the, there's a lot of empty space because it's a it's a completely black and white game. There isn't many visual details to it. Everything is purposely put there so you can automatically very quickly digest everything that's on the screen because you only have 60 seconds you don't want to be taking in too much information because you'll be like fucking around for a while which which is good game design but just the amount of empty space that you have to just that just waste time like it's not even like filler it's just like purposely things are longer so you're wasting like 10 seconds of your 60 seconds to make it more fresher than it should be or just more close like everything you do is like oh i've only got 10 seconds left haha -ha, i've unlocked this gate then you die then you go back and you then get 20 seconds through the gate it's just so after a while you just don't want to do it you'll die and you'll be like is it worth going all that way just to open the gate and see what's past there or is it worth going to that dungeon to find like the pathway through i i, I don't want to walk all the way there again I'm not someone who particularly likes backtracking in games anyway, or like walking through giant open spaces. And it's like, ah, ah, I kind of just don't want to do this. And then you kind of put it down. And then after a while, maybe you're like, oh, maybe I'll give it another shot. And then, you you know, you, you die maybe 50 more times. Like you spend, a, you know, <laughs> another hour or so. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd recommend it right mm. now. That's it's a shame because it's the idea cheap. seems like it's got potential. That's the thing is the idea does have potential. I just think the execution in terms of – and a lot of people are probably going to be completely in, a dis, in disagreement with me, which is totally fine because the idea is that you know, you've only got 60 seconds and then you live in this world where everyone is super slow. Like that is kind of funny. You know, It's like you're waiting for – you're like someone's speaking and you're like, come on, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. But they, you know, you die while they're talking and you, you miss, like, the last word of his, like, oh, sentence God, or something. Oh, God, that but sounds bad. Yeah. In the, in See, the like... beginning, in the beginning for, like, the first ten times, haha, it's super funny. But when you're trying to, like, finish the game or make some serious progress, you're just like, this is getting frustrating and not There's... in a good way. It's not like Dark Souls There's where a... you learn a bit more. It's just like, oh, I'm just running to the same spot and, and trying so many something different. good designs that like already have that 60 seconds of pacing to them like endless runners on mobiles there's like no way a, a character in an endless runner game on a mobile can like last 60 seconds right off the bat without significant amount of of, of retries and, and learned skills from the player and um like like a 60 second burst of action in like a fast-paced fps arena shooter is something i could i could picture being a lot of fun it is it's like a uh a poo particle game on the on the toilet for for the switch or something 
Um, like I can see that as well with this. I think I think it came out for Vita too. And I mean, like on the Vita, oh maybe not on the Vita actually. I think it's only on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So it's like you have to turn your console on. It'll play oh, for like. It's not that's like not where it should be. I don't know. I this think thing should they should be on phones or the Switch. I think they made it in Game Maker, so I guess their options were a little mm. limited. You can make it for phones, I guess, but it is. I mean, it it feels pretty nice to play. It you know, it's kind of. It, it feels a little weighty because it's obviously quite slow, but yeah, I don't know. For the satisfaction you get out of, you, you know, Zelda, the da, 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 the, this game has a lot of that, but it's like one or two seconds of satisfaction compared to the, the 58 <laughs> other seconds that you're just like, you know, you're just, you know, walking through the world, just like, oh, I've seen this like 50 times now. I don't want to see this again. And you're just like, ah, now I can progress to the next part. It kind of just feels a bit of a slog towards... When towards... watching footage of this, the guy's sword slash is driving me freaking nuts. It's quite the, slow. The, the, it's very heavy. It's quite it, slow. But it's cute because it looks like when, it, when it's sheath, it looks like he's got a little hat on. I like that. Like the, the hilt <laughs> of the sword makes it look like he's wearing a hat. He's cute. Wow. It's a cute. It's a cute looking game and the soundtrack is very cool. And I like the I do like the design. Like I like the mechanic. It's interesting. I just I just feel like it wasn't executed as well as it could have been. Com- like uh, maybe the world wasn't executed compare comparatively to the mechanic. Like there's so much open space. Like you watch the trailer and it's like him going through vast bits of ocean or like vast bits of desert, and it's just big empty space that you're just wasting seconds crossing. And I get it. But when it comes to like playing as a game, it's like, is this fun? Yeah, in the start. But as you go on, uh, it's just uh, I just don't want to do this anymore. But so, it's pretty cheap, so maybe maybe if you want to waste some time for like three or four hours and try it for yourself. Speaking of things that I can't decide if they're fun or not. Uh, Matt, have you ever played Arizona Sunshine on mm-hmm. your uh, VR? Mm-hmm. Is that what's the I? D- why do people? Why is that game one of the top selling VR games on I don't Steam? Know. And is it really I, any good? I don't know why. I played a bit of it, and I was just like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe people like zombies. I the idea of, of shooting zombies in VR sounds like. A no-brainer, easy concept, so I guess this developer went through with it, executing on that idea in the most, like, least creative way possible. You play as this, like, miserable, kind of, kind of gun-nut-sounding yeah. so- socio... I don't... He's really mean to these zombies he's shooting up. Anyways, you play as a, as a main character who's, like, devoid of personality. He picks up a gun and goes, Oh, yeah, it's time to shoot some Zambos. Yeah. And, and laughs at them as, as you mow them down. And there's, like, a little bit of an interesting arc in the, the middle where, where he finds out that, spoiler alert for people playing this game uh some (laughs) some twists do happen halfway through something does not turn out as the way they expect but then i i uh continued on playing past that point and it turned into a very storyless almost kind of story campaign but this is the one vr game where i'm incredibly disappointed to find that it makes a lot more sense if you play it with the teleporter on instead of walking i've been trying to play arizona with the walking mode turned on and i've been hating it like i just can't handle the controls the butt and i think it's all down to button placement I, yeah. I started playing it with the teleporter last night and i was like going through it way faster and way easier which is weird because i thought it would be the other way around well, it's if i because play you rec have a room PSVR, george Oh yeah, yeah, and then and then and then we're gonna 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 go there. Okay, <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys are just digging all sorts of rusty knives into all sorts of wounds today. But I, the button placement in Arizona Sunshine, when you're blinded by a VR headset, you don't have a visual reference for the places your fingers are on the controller. And in Rec Room, the smooth locomotion works by holding down a big, chunky, obvious button in the middle of the controller. In Arizona Sunshine, it works by pressing a little tiny 
really tiny. I cannot stress how tiny the face buttons on the PS Move controllers are, but the left lower left X button from the big chunky middle button makes you move, and that's like the most important button on the scheme that you want to hold down all the time as you're strafing around zombies and backpedaling from zombies, but they put it on a controller that's too far out of the way to be comfortable for VR, whereas it would make perfect sense as a control scheme as a motion-controlled game. Without VR, it would be really lame. It's kind of really lame in VR anyway, but um, <laughs> throughout the whole time I was playing this game, I was getting my button placement mixed up with my fingers and I switched it to teleportation mode and suddenly I had no problems whatsoever and your character can actually move through the environment faster by like blinking in and out with the teleporter like 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 you're blinking in Dishonored basically but if you press and hold the sprint button and move with traditional locomotion you're only going at something like 75% of that speed and that was really weird to see how much better this game became with what I have always considered a worse method of movement. Have you ever, like, gotten that vibe? That, like, weird cognitive no, dissonance where something you were sure of was wrong right in front of your very eyes? The teleport, I, I can't remember. Um, is it... Does it have a cooldown? No. Okay, then... But then when you're it, close to zombies, you can't the zombies have like a little control radius that you can't teleport past them in so they put them in choke points where you uh have to shoot the zombies to progress but if there's no zombies around there's no cooldown and you can you can have your character zip teleport around. in increments from one side yeah you zip yeah like you zip. in rec room there's a cooldown which makes it freaking painful and that's why we hate it but I like Rec Room. You had fun playing Rec Room. No, no, Twice. no, no. There, I'm talking about the teleporting. I'm specifically oh. for the teleporting. There's a cooldown. Yeah. So you have to press and hold the button, and then you can teleport. Press and hold, second or two, then you can well, teleport. Well, there's a strategy to that. It, yeah, but... You can also balls. combine it with your own movement to, um, like, like maybe give a little dash or something. It's... I, I don't know. You don't want people zipping in and out of those PvP matches. You wouldn't be able to shoot anyone. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I can understand that, but, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I in Arizona's uh, Sunshine, I can totally see, if you're zipping around, how much more fun it would be um, compared to just walking around and shooting and, and dodging around. What, uh, what, what options more. were you using when you were playing it? I was using teleporting back then because, okay. yeah, because I was getting sick. This is before... I became like the iron oh. stomach or something. The iron <laughs> stomach. <laughs> like, I, I just don't get sick anymore. It's so. like the iron chic, but a little more anatomical. Yeah. Um, um, it's really satisfying to play a good VR game with locomotion because it does feel like you are living Doom. And apparently there's a... The, the Doom VFR version apparently isn't what you think it is they they want you using a combined i haven't played it but i really i'm i'm morbidly curious to check it out because it got negative reviews reviews didn't like a vr version of doom and it's really easy to imagine them just straight up porting doom 2016 over and playing it on the psm controller i don't know about other methods but in doom via vfr you use a weird two-handed scheme that has a grenade or something in your left hand and a combination of dashing and teleporting that you move with your right hand and, and the gun sways in the game, whether or not you're swaying it in real life. I'm just real interested to talk about movement methods a bit over the weeks as I explore them. That's all. I, That's all. I, I'm sorry, Liam. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I, I, Liam, <sighs> I, I will keep my section down to a minute. <laughs> um, no! <laughs> look, 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 listen, listen. I got a chance to play... Like the very beginning of Skyrim and a lot of uh, Lone Echo, uh, which is um, like a space you you play a robot. Um, <gasps> let me let me let me let me talk about all right. The beginning of Skyrim in VR. I right, never right? in VR. I okay. It is so strange to be on the back of that vag wagon. Like you you. I don't know. Like I never remembered the way they look like um, back then when I was playing uh, Skyrim, like the beginning of that. But when you're in VR, you look straight at the characters that are inside the back of the wagon. You know when you're captured, and it, it, it just it's a totally different experience. 
you know, like uh, the dad telling the kids to go back in inside the house um, because obviously we're all gonna die and stuff like that. Like, I, it's just the weird. You look over the wagon, you see the you know the the kid going inside the house. It, it's just such a strange, strange thing to to experience when you've experienced it in, in like two D. It's it, it changes everything about it, and I didn't. I've gotten so bored of like the combat in Bethesda games that um, this one actually feels right with you know um, having. Do you still waggle like in that awful See, game? I haven't played game enough played? of it to to really Ooh, give a. I'm, an I'm honest, interested. Yeah, because this thing has like more positivity than I was expecting based on what I played at Gamescom, which was awful. They had a really bad demo set up where you just waved your sword at enemies who would, like, run into your sword and just trip onto the oh, ground no. in front of you. It didn't look good. It didn't feel good. Oh, it looked awful for how much scaling they did for the PSVR, but you're playing on the PC, which uh, I'll let you win this battle. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll give it to you this time. I do not want to play Skyrim on PSVR. I'll, I'll say that that's why this was never mentioned in my video, is because I did play a demo at Gamescom that left a very, very bad first impression. Can you mod I'm it? I'm interested can you to hear mod what the, the real VR thing version? is like. I hope. Like, oh, can you just make it so you can jerking. turn combat off and just walk around the world? Because I would be, uh, I would I be into that. that. I would be yeah. into that. I saw someone on Twitter the other day painting in VR. See, now that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Like painting in Skyrim in VR. Like painting a mountain. Oh, in Skyrim. Okay. In Skyrim mm -hmm. with like a visual wonder. display of like the uh, Adobe Photoshop in front of them while in VR in Skyrim. And they painted oh, the mountain. Oh, they're changing VR the background. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skyrim's going to have beautiful environmental work done on it. Like, no, but, the, no, but that's wondering... what I mean. Like that I'm into. Like being in Skyrim with like a VR HUD that has the Adobe Photoshop thing so you can draw while you're in Skyrim, like you're drawing an environment in yeah, Skyrim. I think it, that was cool. just like a background that you can you can be in, isn't it? It's it's not the actual game loaded up, it's just the background that you can stay in. I'm 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 assuming that's that's what you're talking about. Because if you have Adobe Photoshop up then that must be like a um, you have your desktop in front of you, and then you can kind no, of no, no. I know, think it, I think it was more like they had Adobe Photoshop running in the background while in Skyrim on the PC version, and then they had a mod that would display mm. another desktop window within the Skyrim VR. Mm -hmm. Were they painting with a mouse or a motion? Controller? No, they. So they had. They obviously had a tablet in front of them, and they would. Oh. They had. They were drawing on the tablet. And then it was it was visually appearing to them as they were in VR, so they could see what they were doing. Now for that the, is weird and interesting for the people who have always wanted a Cintiq, and the people who you know who know what that is would know like yeah. Um, and you already have a VR headset, and you have just like a Wacom, just like regular tablet that's like two hundred bucks. Like you could get the Cintiq quality. Now, what is uh, for you guys? Um, a Cintiq is a graphics tablet that you can draw on, and you can actually see what you're drawing on, right? Yeah. Um, and um, those things are like a thousand and up. Okay, you can get some cheaper ones. You might as well buy a VR headset. You might as well buy a VR <laughs> and you probably already have a graphics tablet. Um, and, Man, I can't. I have to try that because that sounds amazing. No longer do I have to think of like, oh, I'm gonna get a, a Cintiq. That, that just changes everything, uh, especially if you have like, uh, I guess, like third generation, second generation, um, you know, headset. I would say like the Vi Pro, because you, you, you kind of want the pixels to be. Yeah, like shit. Real like, sharp. well, I got some words about the Vive Pro coming. Yeah. But to go back to like doing meta things inside of VR, like the idea that you could like plug in a guitar via like rock band, uh, what is it, Rocksmith software, and like go to a mountain in the top of Skyrim with a with a guitar mod, and then just play the guitar on top of a mountain in Skyrim. See, that's the kind of shit the I'm Oasis. down with. That would be amazing. Like that shit, I'm in. Like a drum set. Like if you had like you know like uh one of the 
what are they, electric drum kits with a USB into a, like a PC interface, and then you you had like a drum set in Skyrim, and you were just like playing in the middle of White White Run, just like drumming a fucking away. See, that is the shit. I'm in. I'm in for that. What? Dumb shit like that is what I'm in for. But but you gotta you gotta know that VR is not just games. We, we told you like that that yeah, that's, 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 that type that's, of stuff. That's what I mean. That's it's been that's too. from the beginning though. That's been there. That's from the beginning. The videos, the uh, people but this is painting, like, PC like modding there's stuff. already I can't apps. Do that, though. This there's is like already PC apps modding, that though. do that. I can't do this shit. I can't do PC modding. Oh well, I mean, it's, it's well, the, there's there's been like drawing from like the very beginning for both Vive and Oculus. They they launched with. Uh, I'm still waiting for George to send me his PSVR headset. Okay. So. <laughs> Until that. Well, happens. I'm not bored of it yet. No, you you're just gonna buy the new upresed one that they released this year or at the end of last year, and then send me your old one. We'll see, we'll see. There's definitely gonna be a next generation of it, but I'm I'm did wondering they, they if they're gonna wait that, for the they? next they console or not. They released a new one. I, I, like I th- they they I'm it wasn't a that. new new one. It was just like an upresed one with that was more comfortable and had better earphones. Wait, PSVR? Yeah. What? Like a like a like a version two point I mean, hang on. I silence Google as we this. all Google. Everyone's working on some damn thing. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PS PlayStation what... VR price drop. Why V two beats V one? Like it, it was like a, it wasn't like a massive overhaul. It was just like the ones they're gonna they're gonna release now are just kind of like it, the new one supports. 4k a bit better and has like new like better headphones or some shit the biggest difference comes from having a newer television with four wait i didn't even know there were two versions of the psvr yeah like the one is the original one that came out and then the the new one is the psvr hardware upgrade yeah the here are all the changes sony has made in November, PlayStation VR headset upgrade. Yeah, it's like a brand new one. Oh, no, George. <laughs> no, no, I'm reading the article. I don't think this is quite what... I'm I'm, I'm being defensive. Hang on, I'm, let, let, me, let me scan no, I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I'm it. sending you a video. I'm sending you a video. Oh, it's no, happening George. live. A video? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an IGN video that compares the, the V1 with the V2. It's like a brand new one set for 4K that has like better headphones and shit. But the PSVR doesn't have headphones. No, it has like headphones connected to the V2. Like they have supposedly like earphones. I don't know. I, you're the VR dude. So how did you not know this? Yeah, I know. This is all news to me, which is why I oh, think no. it might not be quite what you think it is. No, it's definitely it's an up, it's an upgrade. It's like whatever PSVR you buy brand new now, that is the one they're selling. It's like you know when they changed the Dual Shock controller to the the one that had the vibrating stuff in it on the original PlayStation Three, and it was a lot heavier. <laughs> it's like that. They just added some features. Okay, so it, it, it George has, got the lowest of the lowest. <laughs> <laughs> it has it has built-in headphones. Yeah. See. The internal screen stays the same. There's no improvements to tracking, resolution, screen clarity, or anything else. While PS4 Pro owners may note VR graphical improvements from any select games, the differences will show up just as well on both old and the new headsets. Similarly, the the image provided on the original PS4 and PS4 Slim will look the same on both headsets. Yeah, I think the only difference are the headphones? Hmm. And if you have 4K, I guess. Well, that's if you have a PS4 Pro. Pro. Because the headset was always able to support 4K. Like, if you plug the headset into a computer, you can do a lot more with it than you can on the PlayStation. That sounds about right. <laughs> Which is well, why it's a good deal. I um, guess I guess you'll have to buy the new one and just send me the old one, George. <laughs> no, if it oh. just has like a couple crappy plastic pieces of headphone, then you need, you need those headphones. What's George. the point? <laughs> no, you don't. I'd like to use my <laughs> headphones. Thank you very much. Please tweet at George and tell him he needs the new one. Everyone, right. we we've got an hour, so I'll, I'll be quick. <laughs> if Lone Echo, okay, it's like Firewatch, but in VR in space, okay. <laughs> 
that, that's amazing. what Lone Echo is. You, you you like you play as a robot and you have a um a human that you take care of. Uh <laughs> that you you're you're stationed out and you you basically doing boring space tasks with good voice acting. Um kind of like kind of like a uh, Firewatch basically. Firewatch. <laughs> that's basically that's exactly what it is. Um there there's a interesting like you know background to the story and everything but like that's basically what it is um you what's cool about it is that you use your arms to thrust forward in space um so when you're around the ship or outside you can just grab onto anything and just push off of it and you you gain momentum by how hard you push off and everything like that and you have little thrusters that, that can angle you properly if you want to go through a specific hole you know uh without hitting the wall or anything like that and it, it's, it's 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 a cool game and that, that's all I'm, I'm gonna say because uh liam might drown in vr um i wish i was drowning in vr i'm just drowning in not vr and be feeling sorry for myself every week for not owning vr so okay i have a different like <laughs> bullshit new trend to ask you guys about what is this like hdr thing because that's the difference between the psvr <laughs> 1.0 and 2.0 is that the psvr 2.0 supports hdr pass through which means if you have an hdr tv you don't gotta like switch your cables out because apparently if you have a psvr plugged into an hdr tv it won't show your hdr on the tv unless you have a psvr 2.0 <gasps> and it has a couple of cheap looking awful looking headphones duct taped on so what I, High I remember dynamic in 2004, it's, it's, it's there were Half-Life 2 demos showcasing HDR, where certain parts of the screen would be brighter than others, and now yeah. it's 2018, and HDR is something that I'm being marketed to by by TV manufacturers it's trying to... It's the new push. It's just the new push, It's like, man. It's, it's luminosity, isn't it? So it's to do with lighting for the most of the time. Like... It, no, it's, like it's it's the darkest parts of the, of the image to the lightest parts of the image to having the lightest, that dynamic yeah. range. So you get more yeah. shades so, in the sky, and then yeah. in the dark areas of like the picture. I'm thinking of in terms of cameras, um, you get more detail. Uh, yeah, so, so it's yeah, not just like overblown sky. out. If it, if what's happening is that the backlight in the TV is dimming and brightening certain pixels, I just don't understand how that couldn't already be accomplished by just rendering a different image on the screen i don't know because i, I the, guess i have to the, see it with the, my own eyes the range of it. the the brightness and how dark the pixel can get is already mechanically fixed into a tv you can't mm -hmm. change that whereas new tvs have hdr technology oh. which allow them to be brighter or darker yeah depending cause, on, and cause... the game will respond okay so if you turn hdr on the a game will will um, use that to display like lighting engines have so, like a greater hdr it, it also gives me, it more detail correct me if i'm wrong but what what you just described had me remembering how when you turn on a tv even to nothing the black screen of the nothing will still be brighter than when the tv is just like off and dead so is hdr a way to get the blacks of the tv to be as dark as it is when the tv's turned off I no, believe. that's like you want that OLED screen. You want that sweet OLED oh, two thousand dollars. I don't know these alphabet soup agencies, and now I gotta like know the alphabet that soup. Organic. That organic, that organic mm. There's only one term that I want to keep tossing. That's, that's VR. <laughs> I don't care about 4K unless it's going into a VR headset, because there's no way 4K is like gonna make a discernible difference for a, for my rectangle on the wall. And I don't care about HDR because I've been enjoying HDR as a standard issue feature of every single video game released since 2004. Just fine, thank you. It's it's just really it's just a, a marketing thing, man. It really is. It, it HDR it, it, yeah, it's, TVs. I don't know because like when I look at my HD TV, and then when I go to like an electronic store, like big camera here in Japan, and I look at the like giant 50 inch like to 80 inch screens that have like hdr and 4k and i'm just like oh my god it's like reality <laughs> it's like i'm like golem and i've just come out of a cave and seen sunlight for like the first time ever this is so beautiful 
I don't know whatever technology it is, but it's amazing. 4K TVs is like what I want to indulge in. I would indulge really? in a. Four- yeah, I feel like I would indulge in a 4K TV with a, before I would VR. Before a VR head, you can't even see. A, I've, I've, <laughs> you, you I've, can definitely see a difference. You just have to have yeah, the media but it's, for it not that exciting of a difference as other like it's not like going from four i've seen it i've seen 4k with my own eyes i have not seen hdr with my own eyes and when i saw 4k i was just like huh yep i don't know what i'd use that on though or use it for rather it depends what tv you've got now though like if you're going like on a hd tv that's been like the same technology for like the past 10 years to seeing like a brand new 4k tv the difference is huge the color Uh, and everything not to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm also, like, a really old fart. The whole reason why I'm really so excited about VR is that I want to play, like, new game genres. And and 4K is not going to make that happen. 4K is not going to significantly change the way console games are played or displayed, even, I bet. I mean, you can see smaller details, I guess. Do you like, need I'm, to, though? I'm, I'm just around... TV so freaking much that I just it, it just all looks like crap to me like it, it just all looks like whatever to me at this point like I, you guys yes, are truly just living in the, in the ready player one world aren't you you just you're just fully I'm re- ready no 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 it was a cyberpunk no, no, no. I, that, that, that turned out to be true no I agree I agree with you Liam I, I like 4k no I like 4k I like pixels but it, when it comes down to this like new everything is this new marketing thing new more like it just it's just another push really and hdr you're just gonna get that as a standard now it's just gonna be on every freaking tv because that's what it is now it doesn't even matter if you don't want hdr you're you're not gonna get a cheaper tv because of it because it's gonna be on every tv because that's just gonna be the standard just like them saying like they don't say 1080p they say full hd and ultra hd it's just marketing stuff like for for people to come in and like oh you need to have this because this is ultra hd you need to get this. You need to get that new HDR. Look at look at that sky. Oh my God! You so can see all the shades of brown and orange. We're gonna get so many yellow. emails about language, TV technology, and also VR. Yeah, no, this is great. But, yes, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think I will on this one. I don't. Uh, I like. I like how we've branded ourselves as complete idiots. So no one, no one's like. Well, actually, <laughs> it's more just like, like people taking pity you will, on the idiots for not knowing anything. You will see the difference in games because that's games. When, when you, yeah, but that's and, what and I care cameras about. have been that's, doing that's truly what I care about. Yeah, yeah. Cameras have been doing this forever, and they have to kind of you kind of have to um, transcode your 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 or finished project into something that is viewable for everybody and that's when it goes back to you know the regular standard and not hdr but i'm telling you like most of the time you're probably until everyone catches up okay it's just like solid state drives like until everything catches up with this technology like it's just gonna be such it's not gonna really matter like you don't need it now yeah, none of this stuff I, you don't need this stuff this, that's what i'm I trying to say you just don't need any standard. of this stuff i just don't think that going from 1080p to 4k is as exciting a leap as going from like 2d games to 3d games to to 720p games then to like the, kind of like small incremental change to 1080p games nowadays like menus can look good in console games finally the 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 hud does not have to be so freaking huge that um (laughs) oblivion has has its 2d elements covering up like a third of the screen and that's that's nice but it doesn't change the input method or, or or the design at as much of a bedrock level is going from like 3D 1080p games to VR games. Where when you look at a 1080p image in VR, it's a blurry mess. And so that's where I actually expect to be using 4K content. I Even if I have a 4K monitor, it's probably not going to feel or look that different or excite me at all. It'll just seem like the next logical, incremental, boring step up. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I, 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 yeah. I like things but looking HDR, pretty, I can't even but then again... Comment on. I, I guess it doesn't matter. Like, 
when I I'm when I want to play games like I'm, the situation. game I'm looking forward to coming up is God of War. I, I, really? Not, You're looking? Yeah, I know. Sur- yeah, I, know, I am surprisingly too. That doesn't so. sound like a Liam game. I know, I know, right? So, but when I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> holy shit! The fucking detail on that. Wow, I want to play that in 4K. That, that looks amazing. But. You're right, in terms of, like, the games that I would actually play, I mean, games like, I guess, Dragon Ball Fighters would look pretty hot shit in 4K, but, yeah. How different is 1080p with good anti-aliasing versus 4K, though? There is going to be a huge difference, isn't there? There's There's a huge difference between 1080p and 4K, George. There is a huge difference. If you say so, I have yet to be convinced. Unless it's getting passed through a VR headset, that is. I mean, I, I played, when, when you stretch I a 4K Mario image Odyssey. all around your body, George, I, played I, Mario I bought you Odyssey, a nice a card. Of the it's time to upgrade that that um, that monitor, man. It's not D- upgrade. I, it's not upgrade I played Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey on the Switch screen for the most part, and the art styles in both games carried yeah. it way more than I could care about how the pixel density. And that's density 720p, was. right? Yeah, it's the Switch screen is 720p, right? It's but fine. this is the thing is like I think I care more about good art style or a stylistic mm-hmm. approach to a game than I care about details. But I sometimes will look at a game like God of War and be like, when I see like the 4K resolution screen shots of like Kratos and he's like, you can see like the gray hairs in his beard and the like tiny microscopic skin tone patterns on his like muscular chest. You're like, hot damn. Oh, I want me some of that. Well, I want me some of 4K glory. I'll just turn on anti-aliasing. <laughs> That's like hyperventilating with anger in the background. <laughs> no, no, it's not anger. It's, it's look, 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 George. There's the reason why it looks good on the Switch is because it's squished. 720p yeah, is squished onto yeah. that little screen. Mm-hmm. So, if you get like a 4K 27 inch like all of that is just squished into it like everything is gonna look freaking sharp okay now at that size a 1440 1440p you're not gonna see much of a difference in games uh you're not gonna so you having a 27 inch so it all depends on the size yeah of that's your- another thing my TV is 24 inches. It's always going to be 24 inches because the ghost of the previous lady who lived and died in my apartment put this stupid box up that's 24 inches wide. So I don't even know if, like, I'm going to notice a difference at all for how big my TV is going to be. Like, it, it seems like I'm, I'm at a point of diminishing returns with that stuff. Yeah. I mean, you don't need a 4K TV in the living room, George. You, I mean... You don't. We we watch YouTube videos on that thing. I'm like, <laughs> like there's no. You don't really care about that type of stuff. You don't care about pixel density. Oh man, oh yeah, man, this 4K TV. This this is not. You're not gonna. You're, that's gonna be a waste of money for you. I would say when when you start watching 4K content or playing 4K games or something like that, and you want that on the TV, then I would say yes. It's the VR headset. That will be displaying 4K images, I, not any of my monitors. I'm a. I love ultra wide. I love having my, in you know, Adobe Premiere just like open wide, nice and nice and wide across the screens. So that's that's me. I, I'm not much of um. Uh, going high resolution more. I like space more, but I do would I would love 4K 4K in my headset. I, will, I just I don't want to see any screen door. And I want the FOV to be just so wide that I can't even see the edges. <laughs> well, if you want, I'm sure as Liam does, if, if, if you, you want to be on the edge, <laughs> like, the next you. generation of VR and all the, the silly marketing gimmicks with their acronyms that that'll entail, you get to hear about that after the break. Wow, we went for a while. I'm going to go to the bathroom real freaking fast. <laughs> okay, let me let me... Let me fact check myself. Um, I'm gonna get a drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm. I'm not even gonna bother to fact check myself. I'm just gonna endure the pain. <laughs> Ici Snake, Colonel. Est-ce que tu me reçois? Cinq sur cinq. Quelle est ta situation? 
L'ascenseur central semble être le seul moyen de monter. C'est ce que je craignais. Il faut que tu prennes l'ascenseur vers la surface. Mais sois sûr de ne pas te faire repérer. En cas de besoin, contacte-moi par codec. Fréquence 140-85. Quand tu veux te servir du codec, appuie sur la touche « Select ». Si nous cherchons à te contacter, le codec sonnera. Si tu entends ce bruit, appuie sur la touche « Select ». Les petits os de ton oreille interne sont directement stimulés par le combiné du codec. Toi seul l'entendras. Bien reçu. Allez, que la fête commence. Welcome back to Dan Sons, the VR chapters... Wow. Reference 6.5 rule number one. Only ever talk about VR. The HDR podcast. Oh, yeah, that's what we really I'm care about. I'm pretty sure we, we, made, we did, made some lot of mistakes. This is going to be the new mistake things. For all your up-to-date technological <laughs> know-how. We're your, the experts on HDR television. Your yes. one-stop HDR shop. Sucks. Uh, can't stop talking about how different gaming is going to be yeah, through an HDR anti, television. The NT4K yeah. brigade is <laughs> going to change everything. <laughs> but George, HDR is the future. George, yeah, I'm only going to let you talk about this now, very quickly. Okay, uh, Matt, you and I, we have like four minutes to the floor. All right, the new Vive Pro has been announced. The total cost of that thing plus the accessories is about twelve fifty. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a huge ripoff. Don't buy it. People have been talking to me. There's third parties who are coming up with new headsets that have no brand recognition, no marketing, but there's still more features at the same price point. Uh, what's it called? Pimax, Pimax, P I M A X. Yeah, they have a uh, model called the Pimax 8K coming out for about eight hundred dollars that uses a uh, controller based off the Steam Knuckles design, which tracks individual finger movement. The physical size of the lenses is good, like one point five times that of the Vive. It covers up more of your peripheral vision, and uh, you also got a bigger resolution bump as well. Uh, d don't buy the Vive Pro; it's a huge ripoff. Even if you're running a VR arcade. Hey. Well, I mean, you get that that special vibe, that Valve, you know, feel. You know what I'm saying? It's, no. Yeah. Give it. No. Yeah. No. The thing, the thing is, like, you don't. Right now, just like we were talking about before, we gotta wait for things to kind of catch up because everything is just gonna look like polygons right now, is from what I've heard. You know, well, and on only the certain games are gonna actually look better with a uh, high resolution because yeah. everything was made with the low resolution in, in mind. Yeah. So I watched a couple of reviews surrounding the Vibe Pro and everyone was basically like, hey, it's pretty cool, but it's utterly pointless right now. Like yeah. you're just not getting your money's worth out of anything because nothing really is up to that technology at the moment. And it's so expensive that why would you spend that, that valve feel yeah. not worth 1250 it's not even and the by 1250 feel, i mean 1250 it's, like, it's just like that's so it's fucking if, oh my well, god well it does include a deluxe audio strap if you want to get oh, into yeah. vr you get yourself a cheap 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 psvr or an oculus which is also freaking super cheap you can find it like 350 easy on some places um, or you you go a little bit more for the vibe if you don't want to give Facebook your money. That's 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 pretty much it. Me, I recommend Oculus. It's like right in between. It's a nice little, little nice little Oreo sandwich going on there because the controllers and that's pretty much it because the controllers are the best. All right, there it is. Next topic. Uh, unless Liam, do you have any super uh, enthusiastic thoughts about the vibe, the vibe and its cost and drawbacks you know the and features all right next topic south korea government has fined two different games about nine hundred forty five thousand two hundred dollars total as a penalty for false advertising regarding their loot box schemes there's a game by nexon called sudden attack that uh oh, just kind of looks like a sh generic shooter call of duty clone it has 16 pieces of collectible dlc if players collect them all they uh have a "Quote unquote random chance to get something that turns out to be a 0.5% chance to get something." Um, 
the South Korean Fair Trade Commission was like, no, Nexon Korea, you're gonna get charged 884,000. Liam, what money did they use in South Korea? Won. Won! <laughs> Uh, there's another company called Netmarble who got charged 42,000 won for a uh, <laughs> game that has a puzzle event, uses the phrase random provision to suggest that items they would provide would be at random. However, they're not at random. They're, they're provided uh, with uh, certain premium items having a point drop rate of 0.0005%. That is both not random enough and... <laughs> Far, far, far too low to uh, be considered People kosher business spend practices money by the Korean on Fair Trade dumb Commission. Stuff. So they got fined tens of thousands of dollars. Nexon got fined hundreds of thousands of dollars. Nexon is actually challenging their penalty. They're saying that um, the, the, the languages of how they were using the word random more or less correlates, as we all know, as gamers to very, very low percent chances of the things you want dropping, whereas the Korean Fair Trade Commission was like, no, random just should mean random. And now we we have, like, government agencies arguing semantics with video game developers over exploitive gambling schemes. Good! No, Good! I like this. This is stupid. I like it's going to trouble them. It's, it's backwards bureaucratic government regulation, but it's pointed at the right thing. This is how you fix it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Uh, good. Yeah. Any more of this mm -hmm. shit? Anything else? No, just more, more of this, more of this. Let's let's squash. Uh, Korea also um, clogged up their capital city with, by the millions for several days to uh, oust a openly corrupt person. Anyways, GTA Five is the most profitable entertainment product of all time. Maybe we could like you know emulate some of these things. Koreans. Are Anyways, GTA Five is the most profitable entertainment product of all time. Liam, you can uh, attest to to the hard work, the many hours. The um, sheer artistry and passion that went into creating this beautiful piece of artwork that totally deserves to be the most profitable entertainment of all time. It's super weird, right? I wish there was some sort of thing where I was making money from this. But the idea that there are 90 million pieces of... I don't know, plastic or forms of digital entertainment that has my name in it? Like 90 million. 90 million copies of my name around the world. That's really weird. Mm. That's, wow. Yeah. Like, like when I read it, I stuff about GTA I've 5, I that feel, many views. I feel super disconnected from it. Or constantly. It's been, you know, it's been like getting on for like three and a bit years now. But still, then I remember, oh no, shit, my name is in the game. Like, at the credits, my name is in there. I worked on it for four years. It was a big part of my life. But it feels super disconnected. But then when you think, it's like 90 fucking million things with my name in them. I'm proud. So, I'm, so, I'm Liam, a proud pupper of the sun. But that's crazy. The thing that has your name in it has uh, proliferated and spread throughout the world farther than movies such as Star Wars yeah, and like, Gone with I th the Wind. I think about it in that context. Like, I think, imagine if I had my name in the credit of Star Wars. I would be a fucking king. That would be amazing. would be like, hey, hey, look, if you watch, like, Star Wars, my name's in it. Like, I would be, like, bragging about that shit until the end of time. But then it's, like, comparatively, the like, GTA is bigger and has my name in it, and yet I feel super disconnected. I wonder why that is. But, yeah, it is, um, it is weird. I don't, I don't... Is, is it because, like, grunt work at a AAA studio is just kind of anonymizing and hey. full of ennui? Nail. Head. Hit. Well done. Whoa. Yeah. Who'd have thunk just it? A cog. But then I guess the, the, the Star Wars thing's the same. You know, there'll be, like, people who worked, you know, like, visual effects grunt work that they changed a few particles for months in certain scenes and their names someone had to make the credit scroll <laughs> yeah, exactly right someone had to type that text <laughs> um i remember i remember a little little tidbit i can't remember the exact date but we had to because there were so many people who worked on gta 5 and the credit list was 
like 12 minutes long, which is insane for a video game. I think maybe even longer. That we had to like lock down what we wanted our name to be like six months before the game came out because they were like, we're fucking wow. we're doing this. We're not adding anything. We're not changing anything because this is like crazy. So yeah, we had to lock down our name like six months in advance before the game even released. So it's good that they didn't rush the credit scroll. There, no. there was no day one patch to fix there's the no one, There's scroll. no day one patch. That game got delayed like five times. You think they'd written the credits like five times by then anyway, so... But yeah. It's so, so weird to think about that, um, like, this is the best-selling video game of all time, easily. But also the best-selling entertainment product of all time. I don't quite know if that translates into, like, brand penetration, though. Because, like, Star Wars is a mass mainstream yeah. pop yeah. culture phenomenon everywhere in the world. If you go out on the sidewalk and wave your but arms... But is that... Go, is that... I love but Star is that, Wars! I've thought about this, and is that more to do with generations, though? Like, the spread across generations... You think in the future Compa- you can go out yeah, on the sidewalk, like, wave your arms, like, and say, "Oh yeah, I GTA!" Love GTA. And yeah, people will think it's normal. <laughs> but also, you got to remember, GTA is an adult product. Com- yeah, which makes its mainstream success that much weirder, and also a little um, uncomfortable. If, if I'm gonna be honest, like I'd much rather have video gaming's vanguard product, the most popular entertainment product of all time, be something that's like not specifically intended for an 18 plus you demographic of like <laughs> English speaking Westerners. Yes, I'd Mario. rather it be Mario. I would rather it be Mario too, but the way it works is when people who aren't part of the video game space, because you've got to remember our like community as video games is, is a bubble. We live in a bubble where we think everyone knows the same knowledge we do. But they don't. Their vision of us is Call of Duty, sports games, and GTA. And that's the legacy and the hill we die on when we defend video games to people who say video games aren't art. They don't know about things because we have games like GTA Five that sell 90 million copies and stand out in news reports and stuff like that. So... It is weird. It's it's true. When I when I'm at my job and people are like, I want to build a system, but but I'm not a gamer. Which one of these boards are, are not for gamers? I, I don't I don't need to spend too much. Money. I'm, not, I'm not a <laughs> well, gamer. You'll just be excluding the most profitable entertainment product of all time. I'm like I'm like really well they, the, this this one is I mean they all can be used for the same fucking thing. It's like, it's like well, this one has lights, use... though. I'm not a gamer, and I'm like, well, but this one has a good price, and and it's actually, but I'm not. I was like, Sh- shut, up. you shut. Up. <laughs> Backhand okay? them across the face. <laughs> it's all the same <laughs> thing. Out. It's Get out the store. all the same thing. It's just marketed because most people. <laughs> When we arrest and jail white-collar criminals, they should be sentenced to actually having to work retail for just a few days in their lives. Yeah. Yeah, retail really it I I got to say it it gives you character, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, I really do. Like I when I was a teenager, I cried like the first day I got home from working. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, this is this is, this is how it works." Yeah. I like it was works. a real wake-up call. I think we I think I've spoken about this before. I worked in a video game shop in the UK during the Wii era at Christmas. Mm. Think of I'm all the sorry. misinformed the moms. Mums, all the misinformed grandmothers moms. who couldn't tell what from what, and you had to, by company policy, force as much shovelware, third oh party God. shit Listen. amongst them. Oh my God! For the I, people, I, I still struggle sleeping. For the people who are listening, who you know, who walk into a retail store and they're like, "Oh, we don't want to." We don't want these guys, bo- these sales guys, bothering us. Listen, we're we're sorry. We have to do these we, things. We don't. We have. We, we, we will get to sent to the principal's <laughs> office mm-hmm. if we do not at least <laughs> offer you something. Like Very look nice in our eyes. We are human. Okay, we know. 
<laughs> be mean to their bosses, but be nice to the employees. Yeah, like we know <laughs> we have to offer at least at the very least we have to offer. That's all I'm going to say. All right. GameStop, when they ask you for that stuff, listen, they Hit got that sub to. button. <laughs> oh, you will not be getting shifts. I don't know. Some GameStops are different, but the GameStop I worked at. Whoo. You better get them tell reserves them to fuck up. Off, at least just say thank you at the end. Just be like, no, fuck off. Thank you. I don't need it. It's frustrating. Yeah. I know. But I have to do it. I can't remember what yeah. they used to call it. Like, yep, so. Oh, I forget what they called, like, the shilling of shit afterwards. At the movie theater. Like, like that's disc insurance. To make it a disc insurance. <laughs> <laughs> disc <laughs> insurance. <laughs> Like disc insurance for your games. Like, did you want to buy disc insurance for three pounds on your three pound worth oh, yeah, the- party game? Wow, for the what a DLC that. microtransaction rip off that must season have been. pass disc insurance. Ugh. Like, Ugh, oh god, kill me anyway. Because anyway. most people will not do that. What combo did you have to offer, George? Uh, fries. Oh, not fries. What was the uh, combo it, called? You called it. You called it something. I, d- I was sixteen years old. I worked <laughs> at a concession stand in a movie theater for a little while, and and then they put me on Usher. But uh, we had to always ask a customer if they wanted to make their their refreshments a combo, which meant if someone went up to you and just wanted like a candy, you'd have to ask them if they wanted popcorn and a beverage with that, and then you got to ask them if they wanted to to make it large. So uh, they really pushed for the upsell at that concession Japan, stand because that's they the only way movie that. theaters make their money because the studios don't take too much of a cut from the ticket sales. You know, like when Japan, you go to a movie theater, it's not even the movie theater managers who make money. Oh, the system is so fucked up. You know, in Japan, they don't do that at all. They do not Good. do that. They take. Do they enable small no, businesses like, to be able to, to like them. handle their own money? For like larger sizes oh. or like extra stuff, you have to tell oh, them. Oh yeah. Like in Japan, they have That's sets. But like, if you want extra sets. stuff, you have to tell them. They will not ask you. They will just like and, if you just say, "I want a cheeseburger set," they important. will give you a cheeseburger with fries, medium. Wait, fuck. That's it. They will. Uh, sorry. That's it. I just now realized we're still on the clock. We got to wrap up these questions. Yeah, the the podcast is is coming to a close. Super We're approaching me. that that two hour limit. <clears throat> All right. So, would you like a, a combo with your email questions? Yeah, Jonas, I guess. Okay. I guess. Uh, because with your question, we also got the upsell. We got tons of German advice. Uh, but at the very very end of a very long stretch of how to properly pronounce your vus and your s, uh, he asks one question. Many games are currently criticized for fault. That is, mini-games, not miniature games. Mini-games are currently criticized for false advertising. Can you think of any games where advertising the game without representing the spirit of it made the game itself better? So I assume he's talking about E3 trailers and pre-rendered commercials that don't look like what the game like plays like. Like virtual slices of games before they're mm. released, I guess. Or, or like cinematic trailers. The Killzone, and I have the one, Killzone in one is the one that comes to mind. Yes, that is that was like the egregious example. Yeah. Everyone looked at that trailer and was like, "Yep, this is bullshit." Oh, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> there are <there's laughs> so many. <laughs> um, uh, can you think 15? of any games? It's <laughs> <laughs> the truth. Can you think of any games where advertising the game without representing the spirit of it made the game itself better? Oh, oh, I was just about to like say, eh, the World of Warcraft cinematic commercials are always good fun. But without I don't know if they make the game itself without without represent- better. Yeah. Like, yeah, because I, 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 I didn't a secret, like maybe like not revealing too much. Well, I do believe that the World of Warcraft cinematic commercials do not represent the spirit of the game. When you're playing World of Warcraft, you're like sitting there pressing a button every now and then with like very cheap polygonal 3D graphics that have you like working combat on a countdown timer. Then you watch a World of Warcraft commercial and it's this like incredibly yeah. overproduced beautiful CGI fight scene with like really fancy choreography that just does not look or sound or feel like the game at all but still gets you hyped as fuck and stays true to the art style. Magic is very similar. Like the adverts they have for new magic card sets are fucking amazing. And everything surrounding it gets you super hyped and super into the lore and everything. And then it's a card game. 
Yeah, I, I like always that. thought those were like, I like fine. That. It's 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 not like those those World of Warcraft commercials like make it look like like the high camera uh, over behind the back angle with the HUD on the screen with the fancy 3D pre-rendered graphics. Like it's pretty clear that the thing you're watching is not going to be the game like you're playing. Recent, like the the past like three expansions from like Warlords of Draenor onwards, they got pretty cinematic with some sequences. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I think I, a bit. don't get me wrong. I do think it's like fine. I, I like just wow. don't think it's representative. But I think it's like not representative in a way that's excusable and fine. But let's see. Any oh, the best, the best example of it is like oh, yeah. oh, is it a good job? Oh, with that? oh, I yeah, Gears of War the um yeah like Mad World commercial kind of made the game feel a little classier, even though the game itself was not as classy as that commercial. Yeah, I <laughs> the mean, Halo it, one. That had all Ooh. the like, yeah, the miniatures. Yeah, the miniatures. Yeah, those. Uh, let's see. Maybe what what would be counting as good advertising that makes the game better are like ARGs or supplementary materials. Hmm, which, oh my god, which, the Pokemon uh, Go advert, the original Pokemon Go advert. Holy shit! I feel like <laughs> that is the the most egregious bullshit. Like that original trailer with like all those awesome CGI. Everyone's crowding around Times Square. Oh my and god! Yeah, Pokemon. and then you like and the game doesn't even have battling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's it. I feel like we've not but, quite answered the question, but we went. Down I think a good like time. your Halo Three though is real close. Well, well, your Halo Three answer, yeah. Well, yeah, I say Gears of War. Yeah, Gears of War it's definitely. A, yeah, yeah, but he asks without representing the spirit, so I feel like maybe hiding. I feel like he's hiding. Like, you know, many games are, cr are currently criticized for false advertising, so I guess they're overhyping their games. Like, this is what we're talking about. Or maybe, like, having these amazing trailers and the game is kind of, eh, or just like, oh, it's, you know, it's not as good. I feel like maybe, like, games that had subtle advertising that turned out to be, like, way better than they actually were. Like, Into the Breach. That had, like, one trailer that made it look like a kind of just, like, cheap turn-based strategy game and then you play the game and it's like the most intense awesome experience mm. i've had in ages what about those call of duty commercials where all the like normal working class joes are shooting each other up like they're badass action heroes but that's just call of duty anyway <laughs> just normal yeah average i feel like that playing at an extremely I, good level I, at home I think that one kind of like gets to the point across of like what Call of Duty represents and like the kind of fantasy and how it's utilized in the world without using any gameplay footage at all that doesn't even stick to the art style of the gameplay footage. That that Anyway, we've we've got there's some good examples that I think uh if not like for sure answer the question then tickle tickle it in a fun way. Uh, next up, we got Henry K asking, uh, I am an amateur internet creator that has been making content for a little over a year now, and one of the biggest problems I've encountered is trying to condense my writing as to make the video editing process easier. I realize that George and Matt's videos tend to lean a little longer, but if you have any editing tips for the script writing stage, that would be appreciated. Holy hell, I'm mentioned in this question. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, it's well, your time to shine. Henry. It's a Guild Wars 2 fan. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? I'm just going to... Stand in this corner. What? No! No, Matt, come back! Matt! No. Matt, people still play Guild Wars 2. I mean, a few. Yeah, they'll still like your content. A few. I hear that echoing down the corridor. People still play Guild Wars 2. Stop, stop, stop playing. And I, and I don't make content for it, so, so chill out. <laughs> So you, you, you go to, ahead, George. You go. You go. Yeah, to get to get us actually going on this question, I write stage notes as I go. I have a picture in my head. I try to describe it at every new paragraph in a little stage note above. So I'll say like, okay. Uh, let's say, example, I'm talking about the specs of the PSVR headset. In my head, I'm picturing a QVC uh, commercial where they have a 3D product rotating around on a turntable. I'm like, wait, turntable? You know what's funny? Destroying shit. <laughs> let's make it a microwave turntable that the PSVR is floating around. And above the paragraph of the actual lines that I'm reading will be a paragraph that is about as long, if not longer, describing what it should look like on the screen. And that um, provides good direction. I also color code everything. I color code my live camera footage that I need in yellow highlight and the uh, 
screen capture clips that I need if I'm like sliding a news article or something across the screen in blue. So um, sometimes I hire my, my good friend, uh, goes by the internet handle, Encarta Encyclopedia box set, uh, to hang out and gather clips uh, with me. Well, we'll just like go through a script, pick out the blue highlighted clips, uh, capture that footage from the internet, and then I'll throw it into the editor later. Uh, but yeah, take diligent stage notes, color code uh, where you can. That Those are my two tips. Although I'm not as diligent about script writing as I know a lot of YouTubers are. I know a lot of YouTubers use like actual dedicated script writing programs. I just fucking use Microsoft Word or Google Docs. Yeah, I use Google Docs, man. I, I write how I talk and I fix it later when I'm, when I'm actually doing it. I do a lot more improv when I'm speaking into the mic. So something might come across, but what I do is when I write er I write everything down first. And when I, when I'm playing the game, I have, uh, I've said this before, um, timestamps for everything, for everything. And it has every time some has like a little note. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. You're better at that than I am. So Way better. So yeah. Like, so if I want to get a point across or whatever, I have that playing in the background. Um, you, I, I feel like the, the viewer digests the, the words better when they see it happening on the screen. So I always have that going on. And that's why with every video you see, most of the time you're going to see a clip that has to do with what I'm saying. Unless there's just no clip for that. Um, mm, yeah, even in those long ass videos. <laughs> Just like a ton of clips. Oh. If you were to see my timestamps, they go on for pages on some wow. of those things. Um, I can't stand looking away from the game to jot down notes, though. Yeah, but it, I do. I, I do it during like hype moments, but not as like I, I haven't made a habit out of doing it during normal boring moments. Yeah, you get you get used to it. You can just like kind of talk, type on the offhand. Um, it, it depends if if I'm on console. I have my keyboard up with a with a stop clock. Oh, so oh, I've always been using a notebook. Yeah, like pen and paper, baby. Oh, oh no. Maybe I should try oh, it on no. my laptop and see if it's faster and easier to deal with. Yeah, I just I just type while I'm watching the cutscene or or playing that, or I do a quick pause. Or if there's like a full, situ you know, a full like um, it depends on the type of game, of course. But if there's a, a a full scene that I need to digest, then I wait for that scene to end. And then I write it down and I can just go back a minute or two from that timestamp and I'll so, note that down. Um, hate to cut you off, but we got to move on. We got a question for Liam. Justin F. asks, when George mentioned the possibility of Tim Chafer making some statements, I was reminded of the wonderful Double Fine Adventure documentary for the game that people were less interested in the end. I was just curious if you watched it, especially Liam. Oh, speak of the devil. Liam did watch it. I did watch it a couple of years I ago. I have though. only skimmed yeah. it. Yeah. So it's, how is it? It's good. It's it's very representative of video game development from the upper levels to the lower levels, you know, from Tim sort of creating the genesis of what's it called? Broken Age, the game. Mm -hmm. And then from the Kickstarter stuff, which is unique to them and but then they, you know, they transform the Kickstarter into what a video game budget is. They go over budget. They have to do stuff that is a little heartbreaking. They have to change it. There are tight deadlines. Everyone's crunching. It's pretty representative of video games. I think I would like it more if I had any interest in the game itself. I don't. That's not the type of game I... I just... should watch it because I did play the game i didn't see the documentary and the game is kind of mediocre yeah i don't particularly like the game i've actually mm. met greg ricey like the like tim's oh, the right name the tim right if uh, but man, i spoke to him about it um and he said it was a super unique thing to them but after a while they had cameras around the whole time that oh. they kind of just got used to it and stuff like that but the the like production company who made it were the same guys who did the Penny Arcade series as well. So if you've watched the Penny Arcade like T V series they did where they filmed their office, you'll get a good understanding of what the uh, Double Fine Adventure documentary is like too. It's worth watching if you especially if you have an interest in how a video game studio is run, because we don't have that many uh 
you know, Danny's doing his no clip yeah. stuff, which is like as mm-hmm. close as we get, but that's always like post mortem mm-hmm. stuff. And thanks, just enough. <laughs> this email was actually a Jesus. good reminder that I do need to watch it, and since it is so highly recommended, and since I did have so much fun going through um, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, and yeah. since I need to yeah. be watching this stuff for, for my job, anyways, I will try to knock it out within the next week. It's, I think it's pretty short. I completely forgot about it this whole time, but it has always... <laughs> it's gotten way better press than the game did. I think the game's okay. It's just... It's an adventure game that obviously was a niche to begin with. Um, but yeah, it wasn't for me. But the, the, the documentary is worth watching anyway. Especially if you're interested in, you know, the realities of a video game studio. They obviously so, probably thanks. hide a lot, but... Oh. Yeah, it's worth watching. Thanks, just enough. Thanks for sending in your question to dadandsonspodcast at gmail.com. Send us... um, Oh, I was about to make a joke about obscure Japanese horror games that never come out. Send us really popular games everyone knows about for our uh, trivia segment. Uh, Send us questions uh, about being a YouTuber, about living in Japan, Uh about... uh, About to hit two hours. Be quick, George. Yep. About yep. video All games. Right. You know, uh, send video us questions games. about carpentry work and how to fix perfectly fine shelves yeah, that yeah. don't need to be get fixed. That, get that plywood. Shit, we're going to pass two hours. Plywood. Is this the first? Oh, my God. Dun, 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 oh, dun, dun, oh dun. no. No. Oh, we're good. We're good. Bye. Okay.